We just bought this classic Chevy C10 pickup truck. It is a certified beaut. There's only one prop. It doesn't run. Clear? Yep. Oh! Now this is Aaron. He is a real donut subscriber. If he can get this truck started and drive it out of our shop in the next two hours, he can keep it. This man is in this car. Does my ass look good? Now there are a number of things wrong with this truck and me and the guys know all of them. How's Aaron gonna know what to do? Where's he even start? How does anybody know what to do these days? Well, we're gonna guide you through Aaron's process, take you inside the mind of a mechanic, and hopefully you'll gain some skills to diagnose and fix some problems on your own car. As soon as Aaron touches that truck, a timer will start counting down from two hours. Aaron, are you ready, dude? Yeah. Let the game begin! All right, keys in. What's gonna happen? Nothing. Nothing. Oh. Oh. What could ah. that mean, do you think? Off to a rough start. Now, to be clear, this car ran just fine when we bought it. We have every part that you will need. If you ask for it, we will give it to you. But if you ask for the wrong part, we're going to take some time off that clock. Choose yeah. wisely. OK, it's black everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, good to see. I work on Ford trucks mostly. These beautiful Chevys, definitely not my uh, not my cup of tea. So let's see, uh, red is positive. That's what they say. We have not we sabotaged have... the tools. Oh, <laughs> that's a good idea. All right, we're reading 12.6. Well, that sounds about right. That's pretty but that, that's spot work. on. So he's determined that the battery's good, so now he's checking to see if the ignition switch is good. When you turn the key, it's what tells power to go to the places that it needs to be to start the vehicle. That would be a good sabotage. We may have done that in the past. You might remember. What's going through your mind? Well, not getting any power check to see fuses. Luckily, there's not a lot of electrical on this thing. Yeah, no, there really isn't, which yeah. makes me look stupid. Yeah. There's like All one right. wire. I don't want to help him because I want to keep this truck. <laughs> <laughs> we have a negative wire that is grounded in kind of a weird spot, but it's grounded to the truck, at least for now. <laughs> what, what did you, what's wrong here? I know what's wrong with it. Ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> There's no carburetor. All right, well, I guess I'll stop for this for now and say I need a carburetor. All right. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Hey, sorry. It, uh, it's old. It fell out. I think you're probably gonna need this stuff. Do you guys know what the carb is? That's that big round thing that sits right on top of the engine. And its job is to mix air and fuel, send it straight to the cylinder so you can have combustion. Tuning a carb uh, to get that perfect air fuel ratio would take a lot of time. There's a whole craft to doing that. There's guys who spent their whole entire careers doing that. But putting one actually on the car isn't that hard, really. There's a couple of gaskets. You gotta connect your fuel lines, you got your vacuum lines. And so once he gets all those pieces together, it should be pretty simple. Do you have any experience with this carburetor here? Quadrajets? No, I really don't. I'm used to uh, Autolite 4100s. That's basically the For Ford's version of this. Ah, okay. So, uh, same principles probably apply. It's, it's virtually the same. I'm still a little concerned, though, because I don't have power. I think I'm gonna have to get under real quick just to take a peek. All right. Just to take a peek. Get on under there. Right now I'm checking to see if the starter is actually connected. And I do see a starter, so that's good enough. Wire, white wire, where do you go? That looks like gas. Do, 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 do. In uh, any vehicle, really, especially an old one like this, you need a few things. You need air, you need fuel, you definitely need spark. And he ain't got no spark. Now he's trying to figure out why that is. And well, the fact is it could be for a lot of reasons. If your main fuse is blown, none of the power can flow. If your main ground, any part of the electrical circuit is disconnected, electricity does not flow. So if you had a bad ground, for example, this would happen. One hour, 45 minutes remaining. Oh. All right, so what am I looking at? Wiring goes into the column. We have nothing, we have no power. I think I said earlier how I was gonna get here and I was just gonna forget what a car was. I'm starting to hit that point already. 12.6 in my head seems kind of low. No, that's perfect. Plenty. 12 volt battery has six cells and you want 2.1 in each. 2.1 times six, that's 12.6. Yeah, it seems like it should be getting closer to 14 and less cranking, so. I think right now. I need a battery. I think oh. you just lost 10 minutes. Oh, oh my God, you oh. were trying to help you. Oh. We were trying oh. to help you out. It, bud. Nolan, punish this man! Got it, on it. Are we just watching a two hour long YouTube video? I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is built for, by no, NASA. So they're scrubbing 10 minutes off. <laughs> 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 the tape over the progress bar. I don't want to be stupid, but that ground was worrying me earlier, but uh, 
but uh, I could check the ground. Do you feel pressure with all of us in here watching you do every single thing? If you say no, my you're shivers lying. are timbered. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing a gas crisis t shirt available on donutmedia.com, but you're not having a gas crisis, you're having a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like uh, it doesn't have good ground. Yeah, that looks like hot garbage. Huh. It oh, so... it looks like someone spray bombed the <laughs> shit out of this. No! <laughs> well, a lot of the times with these trucks, including this one, people will just spray paint the whole yeah. bed. Well, if you don't have a solid metal surface to attach to, you don't have ground. Let's there see you if go. I uh, <laughs> clean off. Oh, look at that! Oh, hey. Hey. Oh. Electricity happening. Oh, yeah, we got oh, flasher oh, lights oh, on, oh, baby! Oh, oh. That was cranking, but uh, there ain't no fuel there right now. Oh. Yeah. There's gas in it. But it ain't oh. pumping. But it's not up here. It's all the way back there. It's all the way back there, and it's we not We need pumping. some in there. There's a fuel pump right there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Now, if anyone knows anything, fuel pumps go bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuel pumps go bad. <laughs> I want to check before I just assume that it's the fuel pump that we're getting gas to the fuel pump, because who knows? Clog lines happen sometimes. Sometimes you don't talk to somebody for a long time, lines get clogged, you just fall out, you know? But Yeah. <laughs> this has now turned into a story of long lost love for James, apparently. <laughs> Did you just suck on that? Yeah. What the f is wrong with you? <laughs> don't drink gas! Don't drink gas, don't drink gas. That's a lot of gas. This guy's crazy. <laughs> Do you want some water? I need a fuel pump. Right? I need a fuel pump. Yeah? Yeah. Set a second on the hose, just freaking turn the car over and see if that pump primes, and then it'll pump gas through it or it won't. Then you don't have to give freaking gas in your mouth. That was quite the spectacle. And now his name's Gas Sucking Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Placing a bad fuel pump on a small block is a lot easier than modern cars, which are usually buried in the gas tank. Those aren't fun. Nah, this is really tight. And we're caught on something. This one is just right on the side of the block. Very easy. So this is your mechanical fuel pump right here. An easy way to test this is to crank the car over without a fuel line coming off of it. And if it spurts out fuel, congrats. Your mechanical fuel pump is working. These pumps are bolted directly to the engine. A camshaft lobe hits this push rod, which then Hits this little arm right here, repeatedly thousands of times a minute. That's how it pumps your fuel. There's one problem though. We did not give Aaron the push rod. All right. Oh no, wait. What? I knew it was, something felt different. What felt different? Well, there is something that is supposed to be that I can't feel. Is there a push rod missing? Hell yeah! There is! He said it. Oh my God! Who's got the rod? Aaron, you're really smart. <laughs> <laughs> I was freaking sweating. I know, dude. It? I thought you were gonna put that thing Who's on. Got... That was exciting. This is why we do this. There it is. Big old push rod. Um, There's a stick of steel. Hop on in. You wanna drop a chair in there? I think he's in the, the official position. Right. Yeah, this is the official Ooh. truck position. That's... One hour remaining! Real? <laughs> that was great. Oh! Beyonce who? Time for the carparts.com pro tip. Brought to you by carparts.com. Get the right parts for the right price and at checkout, they'll even give you a quote to have someone install it for you. Now I bet Aaron wishes he had that kind of service right now. Really struggling with that fuel pump push rod, which is available on carparts.com. Oh no. The rod fell down. It fell down? Yeah, it slid back down. Uh oh. Oh heck. The problem with doing this job is that sometimes that push rod can just fall right out of the motor. So there's a lot of old school ways of keeping that push rod in place while you complete the job so you don't have to mess around with it. I gotta turn the truck over because the rod is in the wrong position. Hands are clear. Hands clear. Whoa. I think that's enough. We'll find out. Just... This is an off center lobe right here. And so what he's trying to do is by cranking the car over, it rotates this around so it's on the shallow side. Since it's on the thick side now, it's really hard to get that arm to push in and actuate. It's okay though, I wouldn't be strong enough either. Nolan, would you be strong enough? Hell no, Aaron's way stronger than me. <laughs> I got it in. <laughs> Woo. 
I got fingers. Okay. okay. <laughs> Guys, Aaron has fingers. Aaron's got fingers. Aaron's got baby. fingers, everyone. So there's 45 minutes left. He's diagnosing stuff really quickly yeah. and in the right way, but he keeps falling into these frustrating little prat falls. Little prat, yeah. This ain't going in. These bolts are too long. Oh my God. Which, I mean, on a normal day would be frustrating <laughs> as hell. Yeah, totally Imagine fair. being on the clock under the scrutiny of Time. us boys. 100%. Yeah. I gotta take the plate back off oh. because the, the rod fell down again and you can't reach it once it falls. Yeah. It's literally not possible because it falls against the bottom of the plate. Chevy, why'd you do this? I really like Aaron mm -hmm. and I really want him to win this car. Same. There's still a few things that big he has things. to do, big things that he has to diagnose and do. So I'm really nervous for him. I am too. We're getting to that point that like I'm, I'm playing it out in my head. I don't even know if he has enough time. Yeah. Squirt oh. baby, squirt baby, squirt baby. We have fuel and it's everywhere. Everywhere. All right, clear. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Eyes clear for backfires. <laughs> it almost wants to start. She backfired, so it could be timing. Oh, timing? That sounds important. Yeah. Only a little bit. Yeah. You know what they say about cars? It's all about timing. <laughs> got spark, so that's good. But there are other things that could cause problems with spark, and that is the timing of when that spark happens. And for that, we have a distributor cap. This rotor sits inside here, and it rotates in time with the camshaft. So this rotor has a little pin right here, and that pin rotates along. As this rotates, the charge from the coil will jump onto that spark leading it down a wire to the spark plug itself into the appropriate cylinder. And that is all timed based off the camshaft. Now, if that's not timed properly, a cylinder is gonna get spark when it's not supposed to get spark and the engine won't run. So what we've done is we've taken this cap and we've rotated it 180 degrees out. This is a very common thing people do. They install these incorrectly and then wonder why their cars mess up. Well, it's because your distributor cap's 180 out. You have reverse firing on all those eight cylinders. He's gonna have to figure that out. He's gonna have to use his big brain. 30 minutes remaining, Aaron, 30 minutes. All right, there is a bracket holding the distributor down. You said bracket like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Looks like it's 180 degrees off, which means that I need to lift the distributor up, turn it around, turn it around put it back in. 15 minutes, 15 minutes remain. Well, let's try it. It ain't gonna hurt none to try it. It might. Clear. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Fire! fire! We got fire! Oh god. Yeah. Sacrificing his flannel for the show, man. The way that you make sure that you're in time is with what they call a timing light. The purpose of a timing light is to figure out which individual cylinder is firing at which time. Right now he has it hooked up to spark plug number one, which is cylinder number one, and he's using that light to shine down where there's marks on the harmonic balancer. So as that crank turns over, it spins, and it lines up lines that tell you that that cylinder should be firing when it hits those marks. Okay, okay. You want it again, or is it, is it lined up? Um, not even close. Doesn't look like it. It should be working. I don't know what else to... 10 minutes remaining. 10 minutes to suss this out. So the timing was way off. He also decided to change the distributor cap as well because he just changed the rotor. We thought maybe the new rotor and the old cap weren't playing well together. He's almost got that on. The timing is closer than it was. All right, dude, you got about three minutes left. I don't want to freak you out or anything. How are you feeling? Freaked out? Yeah. The clock is moving so fast. <laughs> oh! It wants it. It wants it. It is cool. We're coming down to the wire. Is the throttle cable connected? Is the what? Throttle cable connected to the carb? Here's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, that'll do it. Will it? All right, try it. Okay, try it.
four seconds left. You are a f***ing hero, dude. The carb was gone. The carb was gone. Was gone. Carb. The ground wasn't grounded. Yeah. It was painted over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuel pump was horrible. Missing a rod and broken. Timing is way off. Aaron, you are driving this car home yeah. today, dude. Yeah. The nick of time. Help us make room for some new stock by buying some old favorites at our Donut Media garage sale by going to donutmedia.com and getting some sick t-shirts on sale. There's some old limited release shirts in dark mode that uh, we don't have very many quantities of, so you gotta act fast. The sale runs from the 24th through the 27th of March, so you gotta act fast. Go to donutmedia.com. It's your chance to even grab a classic donut logo tee for under 20 bucks. Click that link down there. Get your sick tea. Thank you so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut Media. And if you want to win a car potentially, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Are you a real subscriber? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He even bought the freaking shirt. Go to donutmedia.com, get your own shirt. We're dropping new stuff every week. I love you. <laughs>